Hello and welcome to Smash Writing. I know I owed you a random video last week, I forgot, but to my defense, it has been really fucking hot. So I just kind of took a break and picked up now, where I was going to pick up originally anyway, with the Alien franchise, which means today we're kicking off Alien from 1979, directed by Ridley Scott. So with all that said, let's dive in and talk about it, shall we? Alright. The movie opens up with a uh, bit of information on the ship. It's the Shromo. It is a commercial towing vessel. It has a crew of seven. It's towing 20 million tons of mineral ore, mineral ore, and it's heading back to Earth. The crew has been waking up early. The ship picked up a uh, distress beacon, an SOS, and the company, poli company policy dictates they go and answer it to see if anyone needs help. Despite some pushback, from Parker and Brett. 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 We'll go with Brett for right now. We'll see if I have to fix it later. But, uh, so they touch down and they take some serious damage upon touching down. While they, one, uh, half a little bit of a uh, group of them are fixing the ship, the other group goes out to see what the SOS is all about. And they find a massive alien ship with a, a hulking, towering figure at the center of it with a blown out rib cage. And they also find some egg-looking things. And Kane gets a little too close, and something latches on through his uh, face shield. And they rush him back to the ship, but Ripley does not want to let him on, because company policy dictates 24-hour quarantine period. But Ash, the science officer, lets him on anyway, which creates some tension. What did you just do? What are you trying to grab on? Which creates a bit of tension, but they're going to work trying to get this off of Kane's face. But when they try to, they can't get it to pry open without it digging into his neck. And when they cut into it, it bleeds acid. So they pretty much just have to wait and see what happens. And what happens is, the thing falls off, and it's dead. At that point, um... The Captain Dallas is like, we're taking off, we're getting out of here right now. Much to um, Ripley's chagrin, because she does not trust Ash. She had a uh, mother, the computer of the ship, run some tests on the SOS and deciphered it was more of a warning than a distress signal. But the Captain's like, you know what? It's Ash's decision. Ash says he's fine. Ash says it's good to take off. We're leaving. So they take off and they rejoin with the Nishromo ship. And shortly after, King wakes up. He's feeling fine, he's hungry, so it's off to have a meal before they go back to sleep. And all is good until an alien creature bursts out of his chest and scurries away. So quick, I think in quick, they throw Kane's body out of the airlock. And they set about trying to find this little alien. Because it's real tiny at first. But when they find it, he's way bigger. The first one goes down is Brett. Then they get Dallas in the airlocks when they find out that it's using the airlocks to move around. No longer a little baby. It's a massive guy now. But with this fall of Dallas, it puts Ripley in charge now. And while the idea to just abandon ship, the jump ship is good, they can't take four. There's four left. There's Parker, Lambert, Ripley, and Ash. But with Ripley now in charge, she gets access to Mother and everything that comes with Mother. So she starts looking up what exactly is going on with this SOS and everything. And she finds out there wasn't really an SOS. And that this was a direct message to um, Ash, the science officer, to re -co redirect course. Ensure the return of the organism for analysis. All other, consider all other directions secondary, crew expendable. And Ash catches her reading all of this, he attacks her. Parker and Lambert rush in to try to help when they discover Ash is an android. And they manage to take him down and they restart his head to ask him some questions where he declares that this is the perfect specimen, which I disagree with immensely. We'll get into reasons why later. But now, there's only three of them, so they're going to blow up the ship and get away. Parker and Lambert go to get coolant for the jump ship. Ripley goes to start self-destruct and everything, which she hears a pan a commotion over the intercom, and the alien has gotten Parker and Lambert. 
So Ripley starts to self destruction. She gets the cat. She tries to make it to the jump ship, but it's cut off by the alien. And she does the race back. And she's the, the alien doesn't chase her because he gets distracted with the cat in the box. So she manages to make it back to the bridge where she tries to stop the self destruction, but is a few seconds too late. So she has to make a run again for that jump ship. She makes it this time. She grabs the cat along the way. And she just she rockets herself off into space. The shrumma blows up behind her, and all seems to be good. Whenever yeah, the aliens on the jump ship too. But all is good. She manages to jettison it out in the space, and the movie ends with her going to Cairo sleep. Let's talk about the pros first. The pros: this alien xenomorph Golem is gorgeous. I love the design of it. It is um. That clash, that black, sleek head, especially the wicked tail, the claws, the fact it has a defense mechanism of bleeding acid, the birth cycle of this, grabbing hold of someone's face, impregnating them through the throat, and then the alien comes out of the chest. That is all wonderfully demented stuff, just well inspired creation, all in general. My only little flaw with him is um, this stops him from being, you know, perfect. Is he needs another host in order to reproduce. So it's either they're able to reproduce and they take over everything, but the moment there's no host around, they pretty much just fall dormant and they can't do anything. So that seems like you know, a, a design flaw here, but they do need a weakness, I guess. And as a good thing, it needs a host, kind of counteractive. But the perfect specimen then is, no, falls a little bit short under that category. Uh, the cast was fantastic. We had a birth of a star in Sigourney Weaver's portrayal as Ripley. Uh, Ian Hol Holmes, Helms was um, mesmerizing as Ash. His retrospective reveal was a little weird because it was a yeah, it was shocking and everything because he didn't expect an android here. So it's like it's like Pamela Voorhees being the killer in Friday One. It's like oh yeah, it's surprising, but there was never any you know the hints of her until there she is and. Ash being an android is like, here he is! And it's like, oh, shit! Oh, it's shocking and everything. But when you watch back, and you see all the little things, and you piece together, like, oh, yeah, he's a bastard. Look at everything here. But Ian, Hol Ian Holmes, it was fantastic with the performance with it. But so is everyone else. So everyone else does come in clutch with their performances as well. From Tom Skerritt to John Hurt to Veronica Cartwright, Henry Dean Stanton, Lafette Koto, and oh, Billy, G, Billy Badeo as uh, the Xenomorph is great. They all add to this movie in wonderful ways, different ways, and they all feel organically part of the crew. And Badeo is amazing as the Xenomorph. Uh, I'm a little mixed on my negatives because there are some negatives here. And one of, I get that they're building tension and building suspense, and it all works really well on the first time watching. On rewatches though, this movie's slow as hell and it makes me think twice about rewatching this movie. Especially whenever you, we look forward and we move forward in this franchise at the other movies that are available. It's really hard to put this one on knowing just how slow it goes. That's all the negatives I have. I've got one positive though. That's the chest burster scene. That's obviously an iconic scene. Come on. It's amazing. One of the best jump scare moments of any horror movie because what the hell is that? With all that said, and the slow thing, the pacing thing, does hurt a little bit. It's going to keep it from that god tier. It's going to go into A+. Plus. Still a fantastic movie. Still a movie you should go out of your way to watch if you haven't watched it by now. But with all that said, um... Have a good day, evening, night, afternoon, whatever, wherever you are. And as always, bye-bye.